Hey guys, the guys right now, you know, I think they're getting a little carried away, but here we go. Let's see what they're up to. <laughs> well, as you can see, what they're doing, they're not just uh, having a wet t-shirt contest with three guys. Hopefully that's not the case, but it looks kind of like uh, they're having a little too much fun with that hose. But hey, uh, the reality is we're finally getting ready to paint. Yes. And even though I think it's pretty much time and ready, it's not 100% ready, so we're going to have to come back at a later date after more things are built, tape everything off, plastic wrap everything, and go for some more spraying. So right now, they're still going to town. Looks kind of crazy, but this is the interior, so I'm pretty sure nothing's really damaging anything because we put everything pretty much outside. As you can see, I've... Uh, <laughs> I pull all of our tools and other uh, things that should probably stay dry out here. So I'm hoping we're going to be okay, but overall, this is built just like the outside of the boat with a lot of epoxy and fiberglass. <laughs> They're just bailing water. This is crazy time. Everything's basically waterproof, so I think they are too. I hope so. Give it to me like. So if for any reason you were wondering why are they hosing the interior, well, that's a good question. Unless you've done this before, you probably wouldn't understand, but the reality is dust, lots of dust. I don't think we'd have enough rags and enough time to wipe everything down. And the ceiling they were hosing and walls, this is a lot of square footage. The ceiling is roughly 20 feet by 20 feet. That's pretty rough, but that's kind of to bring to light the scale of what we're dealing with. So because the roof is all at a slope, if they hose it, it can drain pretty quickly. And the interior, there's nothing to worry about inside. So we're just going to town with the hose, but that's really the way you get the dust off. You gotta, you gotta pretty much wash it with soap and water. And then to get that off, hose is your most effective way. You can take a multi, multi-hour job doing everything by hand and rags and a spray bottle, that type of stuff, and you still won't get the dust truly off. So by doing it with a hose, if there's nothing to ruin, hopefully that would be the case. No electronics, which I plastic wrapped uh, my helm inside, so hopefully that stays dry. This is pretty much how it goes. So get the shop back out and stop, start pumping out water. But within a few minutes, the water dries up fast here. It's really hot today, even though they were going crazy with the hose, other than big puddles on the floor, which is pretty easy to zoom up. Uh, it's drying up fast, and we're gonna be spraying probably tomorrow morning.
collateral damage I am. Yeah. Man, I don't think the interior has been this clean, or I should say as dust free on this whole project. I have been living in a, I can't say a dust free environment, let's just face it. Between the dirt yard and all the wind storms that come up at night. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. I don't know if I'm gonna survive this whole episode. I think I will. Big chapter in my life, doing a complete redesign paint job in a dusty, dirty boatyard. Most often you would have a controlled environment, dust-free environment. So we're making do, and the hose is definitely helping. So once the water dries, we're gonna start painting our, our uh, finished primer, which will be an all grip product. And it's very, very thin, so you wanna make sure that the surface is pretty prepped, pretty well, where there's no heavy grooves. So we had to go over with First we did 80 grit to sand everything down pretty quickly. And then we went to about a 160, 180 grit, then down to about a three, 400 grit. So we moved it down. So once we do spray the finished primer, we should have a nice thin coat of primer. Then we do a very, very light sanding on that. And then we clean it again, probably with a hose. And then we're gonna be ready to do some top coats, which will be the uh, Matterhorn white color by Allgrip. Yeah, you would think I'm sponsored by All Grip. I am not. Wish I was though, costs a lot. Anyway, we're gonna make this interior in the window area bitchin'. Hang in there, you'll see our progress. Hey, if you haven't liked or subscribed, please do, please jump in there. Thanks. Well, within a few minutes, the water dries up fast here. It's really hot today. It's uh, getting pretty damn warm. So even though they were going crazy with the hose, other than big puddles on the floor, which is pretty easy to zoom up, it's drying up fast. And we're gonna be spraying probably tomorrow morning. Hey, so we have hosed everything down as you saw, and we've got perfect walls now, ready for primer tomorrow. We're gonna let everything dry and get all the humidity out. Man, this is baby soft, I must say. This is very nice. Oh. Queen, love it. How do we get you there? We, we will rock you. Ch boom, boom. Ch anyway, uh, like I was saying, we're ready for painting tomorrow morning. So in the meantime, the guys are outside, and we're gonna start on our mast. The mast has been outside doing nothing for a long time. Now we're gonna start preparing and doing all the work there. So we're gonna sand it all down which we basically did already. Now we're gonna start prepping it. We have a lot of holes to patch. Some mistakes along the way. Martin, when he was taking off all the gear, he used a conical drill tip. He started to drill a bunch of holes, even the ones we didn't need to have drilled. So the problem there is now we have to patch them up. We cannot reuse them. So all my steps on the mast have to be patched up and re-drilled. So basically we're embarking on a uh, pretty much a five stage preparation for painting on the mast and also the spreaders. So we've pretty much sanded off all the paint. Now it's gonna be, the first step is degreasing the mast entirely. Then where all the holes that we're gonna patch, we're gonna basically use allodyne and alloprep. And those are two aluminum etching uh, chemicals that we're gonna use to get it ready for painting. But because we have so many holes we have to patch, and literally we have hundreds. The old mass track um, is basically uh, just a horrible track. I don't like the design, so we're gonna patch up literally probably 200 holes, and they're about a quarter inch thick, or I should say a quarter inch in diameter, and they've been drilled out, conical tipped, so they all have a bit of a, of a um, a V type shape now. So we're going to prep the metal, make sure there's no corrosion potential. Then we're gonna use the 407 epoxy filler, thickened epoxy. We're gonna fill up a ton of holes. Then we're gonna go back and do the same process. Degrease it after we sand it all out, degrease them. And then we're going to alloprep, allodyne. And then we're going to use a Max Core primer. Max Core is an all grip product very expensive and it leaves a green, I believe it's green, um, a green texture paint on it, which will be then lightly sanded. Then we're gonna use an all grip top coat primer, which will be the finished primer. 
and then we're going to start to use our top coat paint which will be a Matterhorn white so even though our guys are painting today two of the guys and myself are going to be downstairs working on the mast so we're making this week very productive <laughs> So as the guys are getting ready for painting today, we have the stairs looking forward to some white primer. It's already gone through a gray stage of thick primer. And once it's all white with the Matterhorn white, there will be the floor covering there that will have the teak and ebony strips. So that should look really nice. Adds a little bit of weight, but this is a very lightweight stair. This is all made of the same material, basically, these three are the same Kevlar Nomex with honeycomb. As you saw, I doubled up here, so it's very, very strong, and it works great as a ladder. And uh, there's our console. That's also the Kevlar honeycomb. And then there's carbon that we have with the Nomex honeycomb as well. Anyway, so right now we're getting the last bits of plastic on and cleaning all the devices that need to be protected and trying to get as much dust out of the equation as possible so when the spray comes and hits it there will not be a dust storm and cause damage to the primer even at the primer stage you want to limit your amount of dust exposure even though it sticks pretty well anyway martine is down there doing some details on the aft cabin soon enough we're going to have porthole windows there and two right there so there will be ventilation and light and uh, we're going to do a pretty nice white paint job in here. And then I'm going to add lighting and multicolor LEDs. So it will look pretty decent for the guests who might be occupying that room. Anyway, so we're going around the boat, just kind of showing the preparation. So the details on the floors we're not taking care of at the moment. That will be one of the last steps of this process of making the interior nice. The flooring, like I expressed, is just beautiful. Teak and ebony strips. So once that's down, the boat just transitions into something amazing. Anyway, so right now, guys and I are inside prepping. And outside here, we've got gear everywhere. Woo! And uh, as you saw in my storage box, um, that's pretty large and full of stuff as well. Anyway, so I'm walking outside here. Aldo's down here mixing paint, I believe. Maybe he's using the bathroom before he embarks on probably what might be a, a three hour ordeal. Anyway, for those of you who are not aware, I found a compressor, I eventually had to buy one. Yeah, it's a, it's a local brand called Trooper. Trooper is basically everywhere in Mexico. And this one's pretty decent actually. The price was very fair. I kind of negotiated my way into about 4,400 pesos. Uh, two stores wanted 8,000 off the bat. And I guess there's one hell of a margin because all of a sudden they dropped their price and I walked out in one location, the guy ran out and said, okay, how about 4,400? So that equates just over to $230 basically at the current rate of 19 pesos per US dollar. So that worked out well. It's got all the attributes we need. We were able to buy a couple uh, filters for the water separation. I have one on the gun and one on the compressor itself. And this is our paint gun. It doesn't hold a lot of paint, but we will be refilling pretty often. Uh, so that will serve that purpose. And uh, today we're going to be getting on to the mast. We're going to start patching up a bunch of holes and preparing it, cleaning it, getting all the grease potential off of it. And that's our day today. Right now it's early morning, we're about to start our day. And like I said, start shooting paint, lots of it. So next week should be top coat painting, which I cannot wait, that should be amazing. We're gonna have lots of Matterhorn white on this boat, so that should be good.
As you can see, the, uh, the place is white. We